Hold on tight, because today I've got some explosive exclusive news for you. And when folk ask, you can tell them you heard it right here. We've got drama with Ryan Kent. Rangers already pulling strings in the transfer market and even an Aston Villa player making the list. Derek McInnes has dropped a bombshell, player controversy is brewing, and more. So hit that like button and let's get started. This one's packed. So Ryan Kent's Turkish detour has ended in proper fashion. Contract ripped up, bags packed, and plenty of folk wondering if a return to Rangers could be on the cards. His short stint in Istanbul didn't go to plan, with just 18 appearances to his name. And let's be honest, when Jose Mourinho shows up, you know someone's getting the boot. Looks like it was Kent. Nearly three years left on his contract, but they've decided to cut ties early. Now, Kent's time at Rangers always got the punters talking. 33 goals across 218 matches. And let's not forget his part in stopping Celtic's dream of 10 in a row. That title win under Steven Gerrard in 2021 was pure magic. Sure, he could frustrate, like that pal who says they'll buy a round but forgets their wallet. But when he was on it, he was unplayable. When he left in June 2023, the farewell letter to Rangers fans was a real tearjerker. Talked about following Stevie G and Mick Beal from Liverpool, falling in love with Rangers, and cherishing every cup, league, and European night at Rangers. Even promised to cheer us on in the SPL and signed off with simply the best. You've got to admit, he knows how to tug at the heartstrings. At Fenerbahce, Kent was pulling in just over 54,000 euros, 45,000 pounds a week, so he won't have any trouble keeping the heating on. Now that he's back on the market, the big question is whether he fancies another go at Rangers. Some fans are all for it, wanting that old spark back. Others, though, reckon football's like X's. Better to move forward than backwards. It's a tricky one, eh? He's only 27, still got plenty of years left in the tank, but bringing someone back is always a gamble. You never quite know if it'll be fireworks again or just fizzle out. Either way, there's no denying he'll always have a place in Rangers folklore for that title-winning season. Now I want to know your opinion. Kent flopped in Turkey, but would bringing him back really be a smart move? Or should the club stop looking to the past and move on for good? Rangers could be set for a cheeky little windfall come January, thanks to young Rory Wilson. Word is the lad's attracting offers north of £20,000 a week from some European clubs. Not bad for an 18-year-old, eh? Now, Wilson originally swapped Rangers for Aston Villa in 2022 after banging in 49 goals for the academy in one season. A ridiculous tally, by the way. Villa paid £350,000 up front, with add-ons potentially nudging the deal up to a million. Rangers also threw in a 10% sell-on clause, making sure there's still a wee slice of the pie for us if the kid moves again. So what's the deal now? If Wilson fancies a move abroad in January, Villa will be due a compensation fee since the boy is still so young. A Category 1 academy in Europe would need to cough up £224,000 for him. That leaves Rangers with £22,400 from our 10% slice. No, it's not going to get us Erling Holland, but every penny helps, right? Philippe Clement's task is to narrow that gap between us and Celtic, and it's no secret that we need to get the financial side ticking over properly again. The big sponsorship deal with the Kindred Group, £3 million a year, is definitely a step in the right direction, but there's a long road ahead. Deals like this Wilson sell-on show that even the small wins matter. If Clement plays it smart with player sales going forward, Rangers could be building a solid financial foundation without needing to scramble for cash every transfer window. Now I want to know your opinion. With Rangers guaranteed £22,400 from Wilson's sale, is that really good business? Or is the club thinking too small in the transfer market? Derek McInnes isn't messing about. He knows it's going to be a battle when Rangers head to Rugby Park on Sunday, the 20th of October. With the international break wrapped up, it's time for club football to kick back into gear, and McInnes has got his boys ready for a scrap against us. He told BBC Sports Scotland that managers are always moaning about Kilmarnock's pitch and their strong home form, and, fair play to him, he seems chuffed about that reputation. We've got to make it tough for Rangers, he said. They're always expected to win, but we need to believe we can win at home too. Big talk from the man, but we'll see about that soon enough. Kilmarnock's no pushovers at the moment, unbeaten in their last four league matches and fresh off a 3-2 win over Dundee. 
but Rangers are coming off a solid response after the Lion defeat, with a good win over St. Johnstone, even with Giannis Hagi seeing red. Philippe Clement will have his top lads available for Sunday's clash, which is exactly what we need. Rangers are sitting five points off the top of the league, so there's no room for slip-ups. Luckily, our defense has been tighter than a turnstile at rush hour, and Clement will be hoping we can turn Kilmarnock's dodgy defending into goals. Serial Desaires, Tom Lawrence and Nedim Badrami are all starting to show their worth, so there's every chance we'll see some fireworks up front. This one's going to be a test, but if Clement's men click, we could walk away with a vital three points. No time for any nonsense. Let's get the job done and keep chipping away at Celtic's lead at the top. Now, I want to know your opinion. With Rangers five points behind in the league, can Clement afford any more slip-ups? Or is the new gaffer already under pressure not to mess up at Rugby Park? Naraisho Kasanwirjo has been reflecting on his move to Rangers, and it sounds like he's fully embracing the challenge. The Dutch defender, who joined on loan from Feyenoord on deadline day, has already made five appearances under Felipe Clement, totaling 150 minutes, but it's clear he knows he's got a fight on his hands if he wants more time on the pitch, especially with James Tavernier holding down that right-back slot. Speaking to Voetbal International, Kassan Wirjo said the decision to come to Rangers just made sense. He's been settling in well, enjoying a good relationship with the gaffer and his new teammates, and he's under no illusions about the toughness of the Scottish game. The stories are true, he said. In Scotland, you have to become a man. You come here a boy, but you've got to grow up fast. I'm working on that, and it'll be fine. That's what we like to hear. A player ready to dig in and get stuck. Rangers also have the option to make his stay permanent at the end of the season. His contract with Feyenoord runs until 2027, though he's keeping his future wide open for now. Who knows what will happen, he added. I'll just keep working hard, and we'll see where things lead. Sensible lad, focus on the now and the rest will follow. Kassan Wirjo was full of praise for Clement too. He's a very direct coach, which I need, the defender said. We have good conversations, and I understand his decisions. He's clear in his communication and knows how to handle different types of players. That's important in a manager. It's early days for the Dutchman, but with plenty of games ahead, he'll get his chances to impress. If he can step up to the physical demands of Scottish football, who knows? He might just end up becoming a permanent fixture at Rangers. Now I want to know your opinion. Kassan Wirjo says he's working on becoming a man in Scotland, but does he really have a shot at displacing James Tavernier? Or is this just another loan signing destined to fizzle out? Niels Coppens got Rangers fans talking with his plan to bring in at least one player from a Scottish club every season. It's not just about adding depth, it's about snapping up talent we can develop and, if all goes well, sell on for a tidy profit. That strategy's worked before with Glenn Kamara arriving from Dundee for £50,000 and becoming a key figure. With recruitment taking on more importance under Philippe Clement, here's a look at five players Rangers could target. Lennon Miller, Motherwell. This young lad is the talk of Scottish football right now. At just 18, he's already played 50 first-team games for Motherwell and earned international honours with Scotland's under-21s. His contract runs until 2026, but if he doesn't renew, Motherwell might be tempted to cash in next summer. Rangers have already raided Fir Park for Bailey Rice, so adding Miller would fit the plan of nurturing young talent with an eye on future profits. Lawrence Shankland. Hearts Shankland's name seems to come up every transfer window. The Scotland striker has had two cracking seasons with Hearts, but he's been a bit quiet lately. With his contract up next summer, he could sign a pre-contract deal elsewhere in January, which might tempt Rangers to make their move. He'll be 30 next summer, so there wouldn't be much resale value. But the chance to bring him in for a small fee, or even for free, makes it a tempting option. Lyle Cameron, Dundee. The 22-year-old playmaker has impressed for Dundee, and after his mate Luke McCowan jumped ship to Celtic, Cameron could be next for a big move. Out of contract next summer, he'll be free to sign a pre-contract in January, and Dundee would only receive a compensation fee if they lose him for nothing. Rangers could swoop in early and avoid the hassle, 
adding a talented young player with over a hundred senior games under his belt. David Watson. Kilmarnock Watson's been turning heads at Kilmarnock, racking up over 70 appearances and gaining experience in Europe along the way. At 19, he fits Rangers' model of signing young talent to develop and sell on later. If he doesn't agree on a new contract, Killy could look to do business in January or next summer when he enters the final 12 months of his deal. Rangers might take advantage of that uncertainty and bring him in early. Jack McKenzie. Aberdeen McKenzie is another potential target, with clubs down south also keeping tabs on the Aberdeen left back. He's earned a call up to Steve Clark's Scotland squad, even if he hasn't made his debut yet. Out of contract in the summer, McKenzie could sign a pre contract in January, forcing the Dons to sell rather than lose him for free. Rangers could use him to compete with Jefty and bolster the left side of defense. It's clear Coppin and Clement have their sights set on smart, sustainable recruitment. Whether it's bringing in the likes of Miller or Watson for future growth or someone like Shankland for an instant impact, Rangers seem intent on balancing development with financial prudence. With a few savvy signings, the club can strengthen the squad and generate future profits, while hopefully closing the gap on Celtic along the way. Now I want to know your opinion. Does signing one player from a Scottish club every season make sense or should Rangers be aiming higher and going after top international talent? Ryan Kent. Should we bring him back or leave him in Turkey with his troubles? Rory Wilson. 22 grand for the lad. Is that really the best we could do? And what about Clement? Can he survive another slip up against Kilmarnock? Plus, we've got Kassan Weirjo trying to become a man in Scotland. Can he actually push Tavernier aside? Should Rangers really be targeting Scottish league players every season? Let's hear it. No sitting on the fence. Get those opinions in the comments now.